1969, a group of astronauts changed the world. They walked on the moon. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. In 1972, our journey ended. We've never been back. 2010 begins a year of change. Private companies are working on next generation spaceships. Governments are looking to go back to the moon and on to Mars. It's time to look up and dream again. It's time to push humans into the cosmos. It's time to educate and engage the planet. It's time for Space Vidcast. Space of Cast, episode 323 for Friday, July 9th, 2010, right like that. I had no idea what show it was or what the date was, but I just pulled You're it up just, just gonna like You're just going to say that. stuff. I'm just going to continue talking Which until really, I get the right you know. information. That's usually how it goes. My name is Benjamin Higginbotham. With me is a beautiful, mm -hmm. lovely, wonderful, and talented Karen Higginbotham, and we are your Space vidcasters. We've got an action-packed epic show for you tonight. But before we get into that, I did want to remind everyone, Yuri's Night is just under a year away. <laughs> right there. Just in case there was right any there, confusion. 277 days away, and we brought this up last week, and I'm pretty sure I'm going to bring it up every single week from now we on. You have to now. Hit the QR code on the screen, just blam with your mobile phone, and um, you were targeting a thousand parties, a thousand yes. Yuri's Night parties yes. across the planet, in space, in the solar system. It doesn't matter. It doesn't have to just be here on Earth. It's time to celebrate uh, the start of human spaceflight, the start of a new era for humanity and targeting a thousand parties. If we hit a thousand parties, you and I will broadcast the global Yuri's Night webcast. We'll do it. Which we're already doing anyway, but we we're will do that. We promise to do it but for 24 hours We'll straight. do it for a full 24 hours and we will jump from every time zone around the planet the entire day. How epic will that be? And I will note that right around uh, hour 12 or so is when we really start to get loopy. Oh please, hour 12? Right. Well, so, but I mean, you think we'll last that long? That, yes, I do. Actually, I do. So my point is, though, that um, you know, hour twelve is when we start to get loopy, and then we'll have another twelve hours on top of that. Lord only knows what will happen. For more information, hit yurisnight.net. Yuri Gagarin, first human in space, comma, ever. All right. Uh, also coming up in uh, like two weeks, check this out, and we're going to be there, hopefully broadcasting live, but at the very least recording mm -hmm. the New Space 2010 conference from the Space Frontier Foundation, mm -hmm. and we're going to have, uh, we've actually got a little commercial for that in the, uh, in the break, which mm -hmm. will be awesome. So uh, stay tuned for that in the back half of the show, but yeah, uh, if, if you can, uh, hit, um, uh, what is it? Newspace2010.spacefrontier.org, I think it is. Yeah, I think it's actually oh, hit the QR simpler. code. <laughs> hit the QR, hit the QR code. code. It's way easier <laughs> that way. Um, but luncheon and gala tickets uh, just went on sale. And so that is coming up July 23rd. Ooh, you've got it right there. It's in yeah. 14 days, 22 hours, 40 minutes, and 8 seconds. Uh, it's coming up July 23rd through 25th, 2010, and it will be in Silicon Valley, California. It's going to be awesome, and I expect you guys to be there, and I want to get together with fellow space vidcasters. You know, new space is kind of our thing. We're all about new space kind and, um, you know, kind of pushing humanity forward and saying, you know, just because we've done something for the last 30 years doesn't mean that it's the right thing. Right. Um, you know, it's not just not just saying, yeah, we should go into space, but how should we go into space and why should we go into space? And a lot of that will be at the New Space Conference. It's uniquely suited for what we do. I'm, I'm very excited for that. So we're going to be there. We'll broadcast it, hopefully live. Uh, if not live, certainly recording it and uh, go from there. Uh, you know, I think it's time that we get started with a um, little thing I like to call... What's it called? Adam, can you help us out with this? Space News. The beautiful irony behind all of this <laughs> is uh, we've got uh, Adam Voorhees in studio. Yes. Uh, not not our normal Adam. Adam, a right. calf Adam, the director, is, right. is out having fun. <laughs> Ooh. Whew. Who that thought you broke it for a second? I did. And we're having some weird glitchy issues. 
And um, <laughs> I'll keep uh, moving so you always know. Thanks. And Adam Voorhees <laughs> is the is the voice. Behind Space News. Right. And we've Some had that. Some people thought that that was Ben, because Ben has been known it on is not me. It most is recent Space Pod. Current, you've seen I wish him I could singing. rotate our camera around so you could see him. Right. We'll bring him in in post show so you can see him. We'll actually rotate around. He can give us a little tour of the compressors and whatnot. <laughs> 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 so, uh, starting off our Space News, um, actually, I want to, yeah, oh no, I forgot to put a video in here. That's okay. Um, I'll put it in. Oh, yeah. I'll bring up the graphic. Okay. And bam. So, Robonaut, or R2 also talking about Project M. It's all the same spiel. I actually really like this picture because it kind of is like the old... I did too. That's why I picked it. An old, you know... Actually, you know what? I'm going to drop... Just for a moment, I'm going to drop the chat room because I think okay. I think it's really cool you to see... You do need to the, see the handshake. You kind of have to see the handshake. There you go. Yeah, I like that. Very I think that's cool. pretty cool. Kind of the old and the new yep. intermixing there. Got to bring the chat room back up because you got to have the peeps. So Yeah, which actually looks like it's stuck, by the way. Anyhow, oh. so... <laughs> sorry. <laughs> well, this is going to be a show. All right. Oh, goodness. Anyway, but... Um, so Project M is trying to get... And they named it Project M because we're trying to get Robonauts to the moon uh, by 2013. Is it Robonauts plural that are going to go to the moon or just Robonauts singular? Oh, I... You know, I, I guess, I don't know. The, the PDF assumed, was 35 pages long, and I didn't have time to read all of it before I just the assumed, show. So I just I assumed it was singular. But one. even before that, on STS-133... A Robonaut is supposed to be going to the ISS, which some people have joked about. Uh, now they have not just their man cave, but they also have a <laughs> robot butler, which is not quite, not quite the same. Not exactly the same thing. Um, but one of the cool things about uh, the Robonauts is, is the full range of motion that they have in their arms and hands uh, and bazillions of sensors. It's like 200 some odd sensors or something like that in the hand. So they can do anything and everything that a human can do um, in space, you know, like, like doing these uh, EVAs, which is very now, cool. Here's an interesting thing. When I saw the pictures and I was reading about the, the Robonaut is not a brand new thing, by the way. No, no, and, no, and no, I, no. For some reason, it's like all the rage on Twitter these last couple of days, but I've known about, and, and actually, I think we've even done stories about Robonaut, like. Well, and NASA Edge did a did an episode back in like March or something like well, that. Well, no, I mean, even they, last they year, I mean, Robo it was. Well, yeah, they were talking to Robonaut R2. You know, there was R1 and R2. But my understanding was Robonaut, when it went to the moon, was going to have wheels, not feet, because it's it's a little more... Right. Uh, right? But here, it's check a, this out. It's like Segway wheels For, the They've actually got design. a nifty little video that shows you um, the entire process, mm -hmm. or if you're in Canada, process, of uh, <laughs> getting from Earth yeah, uh, from Earth to the moon and having the Robonaut. So right. here you go. Which is here, cool. A little promotional video there. There you go. Brainstation systems arm, T minus 10 seconds, go from eight engine start. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and lift off, and the vehicle has cleared the tower.
as soon as we get back. Uh, pretty close. So, um, for those wondering, this is the beginning of the Cylon Revolution, and I quote, fracking toasters. <laughs> so, <laughs> so that's what's happening. It, one interesting thing you may have seen, two actually, two interesting things. So first off, you know how I mentioned I thought I was going to have wheels? You'll notice right. in that video, I actually had uh, legs. Right, so, which makes for a better picture, really. You uh, have, like, you know, Neil Armstrong's footprint, you got Robonaut's footprint, way cooler than a wheel print. I think I think Robonaut just should saying. get up there and, like, undo Neil, Neil Armstrong's. <gasps> just, like, splash, splash, me now! <laughs> no, but he definitely needs to take a picture. Yeah. Is he going to have a camera on his chest? No, the camera, he, he is down? the camera. He is the camera. He is the camera. Yeah, exactly. Uh, you know, did everyone notice at the end where it said 1,000 days? In a thousand days. In a thousand days. That's what it said. We've been reading up on that, and what they want to do is in 1,000 days launch Robonaut to the International Space Station, but they don't actually give a starting date. To they the moon. I'm sorry, to the moon. They, they're already doing the International Space Station on 133. Sorry. So... We got Which hopefully the is in the next thousand days so as well. We were we were like, okay, well, in the next thousand days, starting from when, right? Right. And so you found out the actual proposed start date is May third, twenty ten. I thought it was May twenty fifth or something. No, I'm sorry. No, 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 no. no. But oh well, yeah, they wanted to be approved by March twenty fifth, twenty ten. That's what go. it was. That's when they wanted to be approved by. But right. the date apparently starts when it gets approved for the mission. Right. But I don't believe it's actually been approved for the mission. But you know, here at Space Vidcast, that's Close never stopped us before. Us. So we have started the official countdown. There's the countdown clock right there on your the screen. SVC official countdown. 955 days, 11 hours, 35 minutes, <laughs> and 20 seconds until I expect to see Robonaut on the moon. And you know what? Yeah. I think we should just leave that up there. Just as Forever. Because that should happen, because Robonaut is just that cool. Thank you, Dave Mastin, uh, in the room, talking about a, a budget approval. Right. That's right, yeah. It. So they don't, they don't actually start the thousand days until the budget approval, so we may end up right. resetting our clock. But regardless, I'm just going to start the clock anyhow. I've started the clock. I have, Somebody has to. I have that authority. I, I, I have granted myself that authority. <laughs> I've anointed myself authority. <laughs> Moving on, Hayabusa. Speaking of really awesome, epic, cool things, Hayabusa. Yes. Uh, we did a space pod on Hayabusa, and yes. the, it was basically the little spacecraft that could. Yes, essentially. it was. And uh, it came back, and they weren't going to open it. I mean, they basically had to test all the surrounding soil and everything around it. Yep. And we've got pictures. Well, and the funny thing is that people are a little bit upset because I think they were expecting. Like you know, this was rocks. supposed to be right. This is supposed to be a collection probe. Like that's what this was. That's why it went up. That's why it hit the asteroid. That's why it it did all of these things. And you open it up, and this is what's inside. <laughs> Wait, hang on, hang <laughs> on. Were if you little, can't see it, if you can't see it, let's zoom in. There, there you go. <laughs> there, look, we found something. No, don't get me wrong. This is still very cool. It's the first time. It is. First off, go back and watch that space pod because it really does talk about. Yeah everything that they had to overcome for this particular mission. Yeah, they've had and, many issues. And oh, really, yeah. considering all of those different issues, they did an amazing job. I thought Don't so. get me wrong. I, I thought so. But, and uh, so, yeah. um, I, 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 I was kind of expecting more, too. I figured they you, they show the animations. I should have brought in one of the animations. And it's like, yeah. you know, they, scooping. scooping, right? It's like little <laughs> sucking things in. And uh, yeah, yeah, no, no. Yeah, I mean, let's, so let's go back to that. Let's just show that one more time. That's pretty much... They opened the canister, and that's what they found. Hmm. But... Hey, it, it's it's more filled than what they went up with. That yes. Now <laughs> we're still trying to verify if that's surrounding Earth, if that's something that was kicked up, you know, right. kind of in our atmosphere, right. or if that really is part of an asteroid. And if that is part of an asteroid, that is the most expensive particle of asteroid, I think anyone has ever seen. Yeah, but it's beautiful, isn't it? When we come back. More awesome space news in well, 955 yeah. days, 11 hours, 33 minutes, and some odd seconds. We'll be right back.
Hey everyone, I'm Rod Roddenberry and I'm here with the Roddenberry Dive Team. The Roddenberry Dive Team takes the principles and philosophies of Star Trek and incorporates them into ocean exploration. But when it comes to real space exploration, I'd like to suggest that you guys check out the Space Frontier Foundation's New Space 2010 Conference and visit their website at spacefrontier.org. At the New Space 2010 Conference, you'll get the opportunity to meet and hear from the people that are blazing trails to new worlds so that you get the opportunity to go where no one has gone before. And so say we all. So say we all. <laughs> the chat room said very, very, some fairly Although clever things. I'm not really sure that the Cylons really had a plan. Yeah, was, uh, they had a great conversation <laughs> during break, which is one of the reasons you should be joining us live. Oh, yeah. Uh, and speaking of mm. being able to join us live, um, it was brought up in pre-show. If you wanted to watch us on your HDTV, can you watch the live shows on the, our Roku channel? Right. And um, the answer is absolutely yes. Yes. You can watch us live. You can watch the, our NASA TV channel, which is the 24... Seven channel, which is usually NASA TV, but then when we are on, we'll cut into NASA TV. Usually, it's uh, cartoons that we cut into, and do our live show. And you can absolutely watch it on your HD TV. Mm -hmm. um, and then, if you want to, we also have a live feed from the International Space Station that you can watch on your HD TV, which is mm -hmm. kind of cool. And then we've got Very all of our cool. space pods, and we've got the uh, archived versions of these shows all available. And it's uh, Pete in the chat room who takes care of all of. I don't have the ability to do any of this stuff, right? I just I'm like I like HD, so. <laughs> He takes care of all this stuff, and he's been doing a fantastic job. Oh. So good, in fact, that there are 9,768 subscribers. No, 9,678. 9,678 subscribers. <laughs> keeping me honest. It's just, you know. I, I got the right numbers. I mean, what's the order matter? What's the order matter? Uh, to, to our Roku channel, which I believe is the largest single uh, player subscription base that we have, mm -hmm. even larger than YouTube. Yep. Because uh, I think we have uh, like four or five thousand subscribers on YouTube, and Roku is only our Roku channel has only been out for what has it been like two weeks. Something so, like that. So uh, yeah. we can taste ten thousand. It's, it's like right around the corner. It's yeah. going to be awesome. And I know that Pete is working on some pretty awesome upgrades to the channel. So uh, go to Roku.com, R O K U.com, pick up a box, and uh, well, the channel is free. So it's not it's a hundred bucks for the box or a hundred and thirty. Oh, actually, and um, if you're watching this live. It's Amazon's deal of the day, so you can get like yep. 30 bucks off. Yep. Is that what you're going to say? Yes. I totally stole your thunder. Usually do. All right. Shall we continue this? <laughs> shall we keep going? I Well, yes, I think we should, as here, a matter of fact. Here we go. Let's continue. And was it, uh, who, who had the two-year-old that did the jazz hands? I don't remember. Okay, well, Wait. get your children Cue ready. Cue the two-year-old. Cue the jazz hands. There you go. That just happened. Uh, we've also got these. Do you want to do the nebula or do you want to do the posters? Well, I want to do both. Oh, what do you want to do next? I want to do the nebula next. Is okay. that okay? Ready? Here we go. Pretty yes. pictures. Everyone ready? ready for pretty pictures? Bam! Look at that. So this is the Carina Nebula. That is beautiful. Which Ben saw C-A-R-I-N-A -A, and automatically said Carrie-Anne. Carrie it's the Carrie-Anne Nebula. Right. Which, we need a nebula named after which you. Which works for me. <laughs> really, it's it's close. It's the Carina Nebula. And uh, Hubble recently was uh, sneaking a peek, as it were. Sneaking a peek? Yep, at the Carina Nebula. I spy nebula. you. Yeah, do you have the other picture? Oh, oh, that's what you're getting at. Yeah. Hang on. Here, yeah. Hang on. We're going to do an effect. Yeah. Oh. Here you go. That's going to be good. What? That was the most terrible effect ever. <laughs> Don't ever do that effect again. So, <laughs> anyway, so this is what's going on in the Carina Nebula. Uh, Hubble is actually getting uh, live, oh, I shouldn't say live pictures, but pictures of, yeah, it is beautiful, isn't it? Of stars being born in the Carina Nebula. So it's really cool because you've got all this gaseous nebula lay, lie. Nebulae? Neb 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 uh, Karina's hanging out there. And then in the middle of everything are these sort of fireworks of a star being born, it's, which is just amazing and it's beautiful and it's very cool. And, the, and these uh, pictures, while they were taken a while ago, have just recently been released. So just in time for uh, 4th of July, kind of some sparklers going sparklers. on Sparklers. It was pretty. I, I love Hubble. 
the imagery that comes off of Hubble has forever changed everything. You know, thank God for Hubble, because otherwise NASA would have been shut down by now. Anyway. You know, actually, if, <laughs> hang on, this isn't a space news item. Oh, you know what? I've even got graphics for this. Um, I got into a bit of a debate both on Facebook and on YouTube. And keep in mind, I do actually, you know, I He does will, read, like, all of the comments I do. I may not read. I may not right. respond to every comment, but I do read everyone's comments. Yeah. And um, actually, I'd like to bring this one up. Um, stall for me for just a moment. I don't know where I put it. Uh, here I am stalling. I have no idea what I'm stalling about because I don't know what you're speaking really? of. Really? That's exactly. your stall? Okay, you know what? That's I, a terrible stall. Well, I'm sorry. Right, I do apologize. Here's the actual... Uh, Good gracious. Here's the, here's the debate. And, and this this is not to... I'm not doing this to call anyone out. Um, it's an interesting perspective. It's a different perspective than what I have, and it's not necessarily a wrong perspective. And I thought I would start a, a conversation about this on the show mm -hmm. and get what everyone's thoughts are because this relates directly to Constellation being canceled. And um, my point in one of the space pods was that we are getting rid of a space program and replacing it with a space industry. Right. Um, now, space, uh, I'm sorry, Army football is what I think that uh, means is said a space program can coexist with a space industry. They're not mutually exclusive. And that sparked a little bit of a debate. And head on over to that particular space pod to add your two cents. He's not necessarily wrong. He or she is not necessarily wrong. Right, right. They don't need to be mutually exclusive. In fact, I don't think they should be. Why, why can't we have both a space program and a space industry? Right. Um, I guess my argument, just to make my side, and it's uh, not exactly fair because obviously I have the the podium right now and mm -hmm. no one else does but my argument is we've had a space program for the last 50 years right. and that has really I mean we went to the moon we came back and we've been stuck in low earth orbit it hasn't worked for us we cannot at this time financially afford to fund both a space program and a space industry mm -hmm. unless we give NASA what I like to call, uh, call and this is a highly technical term a buttload more money <laughs> <clears throat> Sorry, <laughs> of all of the highly technical terms you could have chosen, highly technical. That was the one you decided to go. I was just expecting epic, epicness, and epic, epic, uh, anything it's, uh, along epic, those lines. Epic, epicness of epic. Uh, no, so it, it, <laughs> not to be we confused certainly, with Scott Pilgrim. My, my point is, I would love to see both a space program and a space industry born, and allow yes. the space industry. It's kind of the plan right now. Allow the space industry to do Leo. Heck, even allow the space industry to go onto the moon, onto Mars, wherever they want to go. Uh, but let NASA do what NASA should be doing, which is that bleeding edge, new frontiers, inspirational type stuff. Right. Going into low Earth orbit is been done for 30 years. It's boring. Yes. It's boring. Quite. So Quite. I guess fundamentally that's my point. I'd love for you guys to continue the conversation in YouTube and re remember two things. One, the people are very heated on this topic. Quite. So please remember... Maintain respect at all times. Don't belittle people, other people's opinion. It's their opinion. There's no right answer. And right. so, you know, certainly voice your opinion and and back it up. But don't don't do personal digs. That's not what this is about. Right. Um, and the second point is remember to uh, constantly be checking our website for this stuff because you know we do like to. You know, constantly have this conversation expanding. It's not just us talking about space. It's the entire community talking about space. It's a collective. We are the Borg. I am Locutus. Well. Then, um, I shoved into the uh, uh, chat room an infographic talking about what is space, where, you know, where's the line of space. And it's sad that we couldn't uh, include it, but it's it's done this way <laughs> instead of like wide or, you know, shortened and short and stout or anything. But it's done like this really long graphic like this. So, you, you know, to kind of get some mm -hmm. perspective. So there's. They're talking about like, you know, this is the furthest out that something has been and then there's this, is that's where this is and that's where this is and this is where this human was and this human was and all of that stuff and with lots of, you know, extra non, just space, non -space. in between. Um, so there's that, but um, yet yeah, it really does bring home the point of how we haven't gotten very far. No, we really haven't. I mean, <laughs> we, we did flags and footprints on the moon. And then we stopped. Yeah. And I realize this is obviously my our, our mantra, our song and dance. I mean, heck, on our on our new business cards, we've got a picture of the moon. We're all about hi Todd. You know, hi Todd. Exactly. We put Todd on our cards. You know, it's all about and Robo not going up there is very cool. Mm -hmm. I, I absolutely I think we should do that. But 
humans are, there's just something more inspiring about putting humans out there yeah. and expanding our civilization off of this one planet. So if catastrophe does strike, we've got some redundancy there. So anyhow, point is, uh, it, NASA doesn't have the funds necessary to do both. They have to choose. Yeah. And they're choosing to develop a space industry as opposed to continuing the space program. And in my opinion, and that it is just that an opinion, we are off news right now, and I need to make sure everyone understands that, this is not news. In my opinion, that is the right move. It is absolutely what we should be doing. There it's a, it is a, uh, not necessarily a, uh, what am I trying to say? Popular opinion. There you go. But, you know, sometimes you have to do the hard That's things. That's all right, Ben. You've never been popular. That. Touche. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Well played. All right. You know what? On that note here. What's so anyway. This? What's that right the there? Okay, so in the UK, there is a guy who does uh, some comics and whatnot, and he was approached uh, to make these posters that are going to go into classrooms across the UK, um, which I think are very cool. And what's going on here, you're seeing two different variations of the same poster, and uh, he used some regular ink on some of it, but then some uh, heat-sensitive ink. So that's what you're seeing is what the poster kind of cold i suppose and then the other side of it is the poster warmed up and you can kind of see and so the whole concept is that to see the world differently you know physics helps you look at the world differently or look at the world uh in it from a different perspective and uh can you actually show the other one next instead of that one this one yeah there you and go. star wipe oh man that <laughs> that was way better than the other effect. Anyway, so yeah, so I, I think these photos, these photos, that these posters are really cool. And uh, I think it, it will get people kind of interested in physics. And at the very least, it'll get them interested in, in uh, heat. Uh, I keep thinking resistant. That's not the word I want. But uh, heat sensitive ink at the very least, which is still something to do with physics or something, isn't it? I'm not really sure. Anyhow, uh, but then this is, go ahead. Star wipe. Great. Uh, Oh, that I split it into two for you. Okay, good. So this is <laughs> this is the cold version of this particular poster, and you can kind of see along the top. It kind of shows a little bit of a story, almost, of somebody looking out their window and then going up into the roof and getting out their telescope, and they're looking up at the moon. You can kind of see them down the left-hand corner there, and then when you warm up the poster, this is what you're seeing, and it looks like somebody from the moon looking back at Earth. Uh, which I think is very, very cool. Uh, they are not for sale at ah! this point. Ah! We are hoping that they become for sale uh, relatively shortly. And as soon as they do, as soon as I hear about that, I will definitely let you know because I think that they're very, very cool. I, I, or warm. Ha-ha! I like them either Zing! way. Zing! Zing! <laughs> uh, that's how that goes. Uh, so, yeah, right now, nowhere... Even in the UK, if you're outside of a classroom, you cannot get your hands on these, Tim, which is very, very disappointing, I understand. Uh, yeah, but but we're working on it. So hopefully enough people, I will put a, a link for that on our website, and hopefully people will get enough response on this guy's blog that maybe people will uh, think about selling them. So. Hopefully you guys like, you like this week's show. Next week we've got a guest on. We've got Dennis Wingo, who is the author of Moonrush. Speaking of going back to the moon, why? Now, it, it, totally excited about there are this several, There are several re things that you need to think about when going back to the moon, not just the technical uh, hurdles that you have to go get through, because it's hard to do. Mm -hmm. it, it's, it's, what's that term? Rocket science. Uh, not just the technical hurdles, but why should we go back to the moon? Wait, it is rocket science. Oh! That's Why? like difficult or something. And I think this is very important for us space nerds to have a good answer for the non-space nerds who go, you know, we've got all these problems here. Why Why are we going back to the moon? Why right. should we do any? So we need to have, uh, you know, a very succinct answer is to, well, this is how it impacts you and this is how it will make your life better in the short term. And so we'll be asking Dennis about that on next week's show. And that's on uh, whenever that is. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's on the uh, 16th, Friday the 16th. Wow. And then Friday the 23rd, obviously, the New Space Conference. Hang on, I have graphics. I am so unprepared. You do? Well, yeah, I should. Are, right. Yeah, are we going to be live from the New Space Conference well, for that the, show? That's the idea. Well, no, that's what I was getting at. So next week we'll have Dennis on. We'll be talking about the moon and um, why we should be going and what the benefits for humanity are. And then in two weeks' time, there will be no Space Feedcast live show because we will be essentially 
fly. We will actually we'll be, be flying. We'll be for three days. <laughs> well, that and we will actually be in the air at the time. Yeah. We'll be flying on an airplane to get to, this is an airplane, to get to the conference. So in two weeks' time, no live show, but we will hopefully be able to broadcast the actual event itself live. And so we'll be back with you uh, for that. Any uh, rappy yuppy type things that uh, I'm forgetting to talk about? Uh, no, but, you know, get a Roku box. Watch us on Roku. Uh, rate us as awesome because we are. See us in HD on your TV, which is very freaking Did you just cool rhyme? Anyway. Yeah. Wow. I learned... I rhymed V with V. How oh, cool is that? And I did want to say, um, uh, for those Roku users who are watching us and expecting NASA TV and are like, who are these two fools? Because we're not NASA. We obviously. are not NASA. Um, I did just, we'll give you just a quick moment and um, we'll give you, we'll just, we'll show you NASA. Here, here's what it would be like if we were NASA TV. My credits are broken. <laughs> Wait, hang on, hang on. Oh no, they're broken. They're really, really broken. <laughs> no credits. <laughs> We're done. Good night. Thank you. Director was Benny Higginbotham. Uh, ho hosted by Ben Higginbotham. Co, -co hosted by Carrie Ann. Um, uh, on audio was Adam Voorhees. On graphics were designed by Blue Fox. Vax did something. Pete did something. Colton did a lot of stuff. Lots of people make this show possible. Thanks to Todd the Moon. Licensed under Creative Commons. Attribution. Beer, beer, weed.